Hello, hello. My name's Rob. This is Cattle Rabbit Scale Model Studios. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I've been doing this piebald effect, not that type of piebald, on this uh, Sensual miniature. This is going to be fantastic for any horse miniatures, um, the up and coming Imperial Guard, Luminef, uh, any really think of a clippity cloppity horsey nature. Um, it is quite easy to do, although a little bit time consuming. I'm going to show you how I've been doing glazing. Um, it's a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with this miniature. Um, I will list absolutely everything in the description below. There will be a alternative method to doing this as well. Um, but if you do like this video as well, please do consider giving it a thumbs up, a comment, sharing it with a friend, or hell, be cheeky, let's subscribe. Um, but without further ado, let's get to the method. Now, the first thing I like to do, especially in instances like this, is get a reference picture. Here I found this awful kid's toy, but I really liked the pattern on it. So I started by priming my uh, model with Wraith Bone Spray. This is all from Citadel. And I've got a bit of a reference of where I want my markings to go. The first step is using um, Fondia Brown. Uh, this is a really nice brown to work with. It's not as heavy as Rhinox Hide or as dark, um, but it's going to be a great starting point for what we need. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way around the miniature, just doing my best to replicate the pattern that I've, you know, I've seen on that reference picture. This is where I find uh, little bits of real world help really do make all the difference when it comes to um, horses and stuff like that, because they're very much um, tied into a real world animal. So making it believable, I think is, is half the battle, but keeping that fantasy element um, is, you know, giving it the unbelievable of, of that side of things, which is, is a great way of, I guess, tricking the brain to finding something that looks familiar, but also quite unique. It's one of the reasons why I really enjoyed this model and wanted to show off this method as I've had a lot of fun with it. Once it's all been um, blocked in and I'm happy with the where the pattern is heading, I do take just a few minutes to kind of work my way around the model, making sure that I'm happy with where all the placement is. If you do need to go and correct anything, um, Try not to think too much about it because we're trying to hold on to those natural shapes um, in the, the, the horse's pattern. So I've gone around a couple of times. I've given it two coats. So I've got a very nice solid base color to work from, as you can see here. Um, you can kind of already see the effect coming into play here. Um, but the next step is to do a wash. Now I'm gonna be using a mix of Reichland Flesh Shade, Agrax Earth Shade, Lamia Medium, and a little bit of water. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this over absolutely the entirety of the model, the brown and the white. The reason why I've chosen a mix like this is because obviously on white four, especially with horses and things like that, where the fur is maybe a little bit thinner or creased up, you kind of get this lovely kind of slightly pinkish undertone um, with, a, with just a hint of brown, which is a great way of showing where the fur is maybe thinner uh, on the creases as the, the limbs stretch, if you will. Now, obviously I've gone over absolutely everything. The next step is to glaze white. Um, I'm using White Scar from Citadel. This is a fantastic color to work with, especially with glazes. Whites tend to be quite thin anyway. That's why they cover quite poorly. But in this instance, all I'm doing is I've had two drops of water and I'm looking for a consistency just like this, where it's slightly transparent. The next step is what I consider to be the most funnest part of this model. Um, I love working with natural shapes. Um, I think things like horses as well are a great way of, all animals really is, is a great way of showing off um, depth. And I think glazes are the way to do this. Um, there is a better way of doing this, as I said. Um, I will do check out the description below. Uh, I'll give you that alternative method down there. I'm not gonna cover it in this video. But literally short stabbing motions just on the ray sections of the arms, the elbows, anywhere, you know, just where that skin is kind of raised. We want that slight pinkish hue to be slightly visible, especially things where the skin would be stretched maybe on the stomach or like the chest. Um, you know, this is a well-fed horsey after all. Um, I actually did about three or four passes with the white 
uh, kind of got a little bit carried away here. Um, once again, I, I do think these steps like this are a great way of doing it. And it's a good um, skill to learn if you haven't with glazing is you can really get some really nice subtle transitions. Um, so just take your time, work your way around the model, you know, avoid the, the recesses or the deeper sections and, you know, pay attention to ridges and joints where the fur would have bent. As you can see here, I'm, you know, fairly happy with, with where we are. Um, but I, I do think it kind of misses that fantasy touch. So what I decided to do was just a little bit of thinned white scar. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight some of the, the muscle definition just a little bit more, just to make out the ridges to, to get them to stand out a, a little bit more. The thing I guess with horses in things like Warhammer is uh, they're a real life animal. So we can kind of draw a comparison to them, yet they are still, I guess, uh, reefed in fantasy so it's kind of finding a what's believable and what's fantasy and finding a, a nice middle ground next up uh with our white completed that that was it for that stage i'm just going to come back in with fondia brown and all i'm going to do is just on the ridges and the highest points as you can see here things like here the joints on the uh hoof arms i guess <laughs> the anatomy of horses isn't my forte um I'm just kind of highlight everything. This is just going to help build transition for the next step. Um, but once again, I'm just going to work my way around. I think I, I did two coats of this. Just It was a very watery um, kind of mixture for this. And I, I just go around the entire miniature. As you can see here, it's kind of left those dark bits dark, you know, in the ridges. And it started to build up the effect. If you're going for a dark horse, you could leave it here. Um, I'm going for more of a chestnut. Um, so what I'm going to do is scrag brown and fondia brown. Um, what you can do, a little trick, is mix a little bit together um, just to help with the transition. Um, it just kind of takes the, the footwork out of it, if you will. Once again, with uh, a glaze like this, I just get a little bit on my paintbrush. And all I'm going to do is just mix it together once again we're looking for a slightly transparent uh, mixture if you will somewhere about here if the browns have a bit more pigment in than white so you might need a little bit more water if you're not sure always make it thinner as you build up those layers but it's harder to take them away and then all i'm going to do is i'm just going to work my way nice short little strokes of the brush we um short stabbing motions i stipple it um, towards the uh, raised bits, towards the edges, as you can see here, I'm just making short stabbing motions, uh, just building up that kind of uh, color as I, I really want that coming through. Same again, all the ridges, avoiding the folds um, and the recesses where it's, it's darker. Once again, I probably did about three or four passes with this and I progressively worked towards the front of the miniature so it was brighter each time. Here you can see uh, the effect is really kind of built up and you know you, you can push this as far as you want. You could probably mix in a bit of orange if you wanted to go further. Um, if you are interested in doing different colors like blacks for horses and stuff, I'll list some of my ideas below. So once again, do check out the description. Um, but yeah, I really love doing these types of um, techniques. Once again, I think glazing is a fantastic skill to have in the hobby arsenal. Um, it just makes you know building up transitions so much easier. You can do lots of tricks with it and things like that. Um, but that's all there really is to it. Have fun with it. I had a blast painting this up. Um, as you can see here, I've actually painted up a fair bit more of the miniature. If you are interested in seeing how this guy turns out, do check out my Instagram. I will leave it in the links below. And once again, if you did like this video, please do consider giving it a like. Let me know in the comments below or um subscribing which would be absolutely fantastic uh if you're interested in supporting me there are links to um joy toy where if you buy from me i get a little bit of a percentage back or patreon there aren't any tiers um but if i ever i'm in a position to do a giveaway my patreon supporters will be the first to know about it and i will be doing exclusive patreon giveaways um, however that's it for me in this one i hope you enjoyed it um enough horsing around god bless see you all next time and take care